Hello, welcome back to the floor of my office, I mean my YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Jude, and you can find me on social media as Stranded Diwex. And uh, I'm back for the fourth week in a row. Wow, that's a whole month, pretty much, of weekly videos. Oh my goodness. It is the crack of dawn here in Scotland. I am recording this at, let's check. Actually, it's 10 to 8 now. It wasn't as early as I was planning on it, but I've been at my studio since 7am. Since I have a ridiculous amount of work to do today because, you know, isn't that always the way? Uh, but I'm going, this is completely irrelevant. I don't know why I'm talking about it, but I'm telling you now, I've started, so I will finish. <laughs> um, hi, I'm going to a friend's for dinner tonight, so uh, I need to leave the studio at a reasonable time, unlike uh, like when it's still light. <laughs> Unlike what I've been doing recently, so uh, I've uh, arrived early to get everything done. So, uh, what do I have to talk about this week? Weather. Let's start with the weather, because why wouldn't we? Um, it's raining. I had to wear a raincoat to work today. Uh, and yesterday I had to go out and buy some new shoes, because I've been wearing uh, some old uh, trainers that I've had since I broke my foot back in the good old days. <laughs> And I know that I've had them since I broke my foot because they are, they're platform trainers. So they're like, they've got quite thick soles. And I bought them for that reason. Because when I was wearing the giant moon boot on my foot, if you are a newer viewer, I broke my foot uh, six weeks after I moved to Scotland, um, which is 500 miles away from most of the people I knew. Didn't really know anyone in Scotland. Uh, broke my foot in the middle of Vlogmas. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Ridiculous. Um... But yeah, I was wearing this great big moon boot rather than a cast. Um, and I couldn't really walk around, even when my, my like my mobility improved and I could put some weight on my foot again. Um, the, the moon boot was really thick, so I had to buy, uh, <laughs> to make my feet and my legs the right length, I had to buy uh, platform trainers so that one foot was the same height as anyway. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. That's how I make my style choices. <laughs> so, uh, I've been wearing them since, and I've, I was wearing them outside the other day. It wasn't raining, but it had been raining, and my foot got absolutely soaked because there was a giant hole in the bottom of my shoe. So, this all ties back to the weather somehow, which I have no idea how it ties back uh, to actual knitting and crochet and yarn dyeing content. But I don't really know when I started talking about the weather on my videos, but it's been years now and I'm not intending to stop, so. <laughs> so I have new shoes, hooray. I went out yesterday to buy some sellotape because I needed some. Um, and, uh, I ended up buying shoes as well, so right, anyway. <laughs> It's also getting a bit cooler now. Um, I'm wearing I'm wearing a hoodie. What? Um, this is what happens when you don't have any hand knit sweaters. You have to wear hoodies that you buy from supermarkets because that is the level of style I have going on here. <laughs> Speaking of style, uh, because I am uh, a fashion icon. Somebody asked me, and I can't remember your name. I'm really sorry. Asked me on uh, uh, the comments of my last video. <laughs> Would I do a video talking about how I style my hair? Uh, which is looking epic today in its ridiculousness. And uh, it made me laugh so much um, because I am, one, the least stylish person in the world. Two, the laziest person when it comes to hair ever. Um, I get my hair cut maybe every five or six weeks or so when I remember. Most recently I've been having it cut at my parents' house. Well, while well, I'm at my parents' house, not by my parents, because my mum... My mum used to be a hairdresser. Her very first job was a hairdresser. and uh, But she's basically Edward Scissorhands. <laughs> um, I have no idea uh, how she ended up getting that job. But I've had many a bowl cut from that woman in the past as a child. And uh, even when she was shaving my undercut for me, when I had an undercut, uh, she'd shave the back for me, and I just like, I'd put the, everything up on the top in a top knot, and I just I'm so not precious about my hair, and I just be like, can you just shave the back? That'd be great, and uh, she would. And you know how sometimes if you go to a barber or an actual hair uh, hairstylist and they they shave your hair, it feels really relaxing. That nice like feeling of like having your you know it just feels really nice. Uh, when my mum does it, it, even with the like, the guards on, like for the the, the uh, so that you know your your hair only goes to a certain length. It feels like she's gouging chunks out of your skull. <laughs> and I would I take my hair down from its top knot, uh, and like, ch like big chunks would fall out. 
Oh my goodness. My mum is good at many things. Uh, hairdressing, not really one of them. Um, so I'd go to like the barber that my dad goes to um, in their little village. And I just, I'm just asked for like, you know, uh, a number two fade on the sides and like just take some length off the top. <laughs> and so that, that, this is ridiculous. <laughs> To everybody watching and laughing at me for um, basically being a scarecrow, giving giving hairstyling tips. <laughs> I am right there with you. I'm all right, and I do have knitting. I promise. And yarn content. There will be there will be some. Just just let me get through this first. Maybe to make my mum laugh, if nothing else. <laughs> and then uh, for the to make it look this good. Uh, I mean, to be fair, I did get wet on the way here. Uh, so it's sort of dried all flat, but uh, <laughs> to make it look this good, I wash it maybe twice a week. Um, it's naturally this sort of curly and ridiculous. I don't brush it. I don't comb it. I just run my hands through it occasionally. And um, this is this is what you get. <laughs> ah, so uh, tune in next week for more style tips with Jude. <laughs> you too could look like this. Right. Knitting content. I haven't finished. Oh, no, that's not true. Where is it? Ah. Here. The only thing I've finished this week is a swatch. Uh, another granny square swatch. I was complaining about having to do these crochet squares because, I mean, obviously I don't have to, but you know, I kind of, I want to have them. I was complaining about doing them uh, because my mum was supposed to be doing them for me, but actually they're really fun. <laughs> I've sent off quite a lot of yarn to someone who is crocheting some squares for me and I've just been um, adding more crochet squares. Every time I dye a skein, uh, a colorway on a skein of my DK weight base, I'll keep one back because that's what I'm making my swatches out of. So I'll knit a square out of it and I'll crochet a granny square out of it as well and then they'll go into my swatch library. <laughs> so I've been doing the crochet ones first because they're so much quicker. Like I can get one done a lot faster than I can get my knit swatches done. So uh, this is Favourite Ice Cream on Merino DK and I'm using a four millimetre crochet hook to do these. And this is just a seven round granny square, super basic. But it helps you get a bit of an idea of what the colourway would look like in crochet. Which is fun. So I've done this. I do have another swatch on the needles, I have a knit swatch on the needles. This is Limoncello, and it's super bright. It's a little bit dark in here this morning. Um, it's probably because it's not properly daylight yet. <laughs> I haven't set my studio lights up because I'm lazy. So uh, bear with me. It's a bit dark, you can still see this color because you can basically see Limoncello from space. So it's a super vibrant yellow that I really like. I'm really glad I brought it back. I tend to gravitate to kind of more neutral colours for myself, but I do really like having bright colours on the shelves behind me, and I know that not everybody basically just wears grey and green like I do. <laughs> so I'm trying to uh, have more of a selection in the shop. Um, and sometimes, especially when it's grey and gloomy outside, or you're feeling grey and gloomy, like working with bright colours is fun. So this is Limoncello, I'm knitting it, Just it's just a 50 stitch swatch. Um, I'm knitting it with these Knit Pro Zings, four millimeter Knit Pro Zings. Um, I, I am still planning on doing my interchangeable needle review that I talked about earlier in the year. This, the plans I had for this year have uh, all gone a little bit sideways. Um, I haven't done enough knitting really to warrant doing my interchangeable needle review. I could just sit down and talk about knitting needles, um, but I would rather, and I'm sure you guys would rather, uh, I actually use them first, so I had a little bit more experience, because I can be like, oh, these look pretty, great. Um, but you know, that's no use if you're gonna, they're gonna like, the stitches are gonna catch every time on the join, um, or they're gonna snap when you use them, which some of them have, so <laughs> that's coming up in the review. <laughs> Maybe I need to take some time off at some point and sit down and record it, but um, yeah, it's coming before the end of the year, I promise. Maybe in the next, if I do it in the next few weeks, then people can ask for like sets and stuff for Christmas. If you're looking for a new interchangeable needle set, you can ask for like a gift around the holiday season. So, note to self, write this down, future Jude, while you're editing this. Write it down, put it in your planner. 
which I have now. I bought a planner and uh, I'm actually going to try and use it and tick things off rather than the to-do list in my phone because I don't always look at that and it's sort of luck whether I actually do any of the things on it or not. Anyway, I'm making a swatch from my swatch library um, out of Limoncello. Super bright, super cheerful. Exactly what you need on a kind of a grey, rainy September day. Okay, uh, this isn't really swatch news, but I have cake. I was hoping to do this last night, uh, but I got home. I left the studio about eight last night and I got home and I was just exhausted to the point where I was covered in spray paint and bits of dye from like other studio product pro projects I've been working on. Um, and I knew I needed to have a bath to like scrub off all of the spray paint. Um, and I just really, really had to force myself because I just wanted to pour myself into bed. So I did though, I'm clean now, ish. For the next 10 minutes until I dye some yarn and go turquoise again. <laughs> so I didn't actually get round to casting on or, or what do you call it when you start crochet? Because hooking on does not sound right. I didn't, I didn't get around to starting uh, my another crochet swatch um, out of pinata, but which is blowing out crazily. Um, Ah, that makes it better. That's a slightly more accurate colour. So, uh, I didn't get around to starting it, but uh, it's on my list. Maybe I'll do that this evening. Uh, I'm having like a dinner and crafts night with a friend um, who is a weaver and an all-round creative soul. So, uh, I might take some crochet swatches to work on. We shall see. Or actual knitting. Who knows? I have some actual knitting. It's right here. Um, let's we'll come to that last I think. Next up, I haven't put a ton of work on this this week but a, a little bit. Living in my, this is my all-time favourite project bag, oil skin, waxed canvas, not sure if there's a difference or which one it is, I think it's oil skin, uh, hide and hammer number three bag. This is my Cinnabar shawl by Andrea Maori. it is a brioche shawl with this lovely kind of garter stitch panel here. And I'm knitting it out of two colours of my Merino DK weight. We have First Frost, which is this pale grey, and Plant Parent, which is this speckly green. And I really love these colours together. I really love the fabric that this shawl is making. And uh, in fun, <laughs> Jude is a moron news. I think I might have made an error somewhere. Not an error really that's going to like affect the overall look of the shawl. But these sections are taking me quite a while to knit. And I was looking at the pattern the other night thinking, oh, is it time to like, when have I got to put in a new, you can see that it goes from like, you can see that you've got the green stitches and then you switch to like little panels of the gray being the main color. Um, and then back to the green. And I was wondering when I had to put the next uh, gray section in. And from the stitch counts in the pattern, I should have put my gray section in about like 10 rows previously. <laughs> but then this section would be a lot shorter than this section. And they're all supposed to be the same width. Um, so I think I made an error ages ago. Clearly when I was at my parents, I did quite a lot of knitting on this while my mum was in hospital, like while I was visiting her and stuff. So mum, I'm blaming you <laughs> for this mistake. <laughs> Um, yeah, but one, I'm not ripping back because there's a lot of brioche and two, brioche, brioche, I don't know, how are you supposed to pronounce that? Can someone write it phonetically in the comments for me? Brioche or brioche? It's brioche like bread, isn't it? I don't know, I don't know stuff about stuff, goodness me. <laughs> It's been a while since I've said that, but you'll be pleased to know that I still don't know anything about anything. <laughs> um, so I could rip back. I'm not going to, because then I'll never... All I seem to be doing lately is ripping back my knitting. What's wrong with me? I'm very distracted, that's what. <laughs> I could rip back. Or I could start doing the pattern correctly from now on and have one longer section with some shorter sections, or I could just stick with what I've been doing and have a bigger section and just keep having bigger sections and maybe just less of them. I think that's what I'm going to do because it will, it will be the same pattern, it will just be slightly different. We shall see. But I like it, I really like it, and I, I love the, I love both of the textures. 
It's going to be an amazing shop sample. I was hoping to have it finished for Glasgow School of Yarn, which is about a month away. I don't know, that's probably not going to happen, but... I'd say I could knit on it at Glasgow School of Yarn, but, you know, I messed it up sitting quietly next to a sick person in hospital. I'm not about to knit on it at a show. <laughs> Goodness me. <laughs> Ridiculous. So that's Cinnabar by Andrea Mowry. These aren't really knitting videos anymore, are they? They're more like uh, mistakes videos. <laughs> Frogging videos. <laughs> Ridiculous. Okay. And last, but by no means least, we have my single malt sweater, which I did say on the last video, uh, you probably wouldn't see again. And then I had a change of heart. I woke up at the weekend and I was like, okay, why don't I just rip that sleeve back? because I'm gonna have to rip the whole thing out anyway. So I could just rip the sleeve back and then spend a little bit of time trying to make it work. And I had loads of other skeins. Like, I can't remember how, I think I dyed, like, I don't know how many, I'm gonna say 12, but that doesn't seem like enough because there's still, I can still see one, two, three, four, five. There's still six skeins of Aran weight kicking around uh, in my office, along with, the two that are attached to the sweater. And I think there's a partial ball of it back at home. Um, we'll see. <laughs> so, single malt. I did film a little uh, a little video that I uploaded to YouTube Shorts um, of me ripping out the sleeve. If you want to see that, uh, check it out. It'll be, I don't know where you find YouTube Shorts on YouTube channels, but um, it'll be there. <laughs> so I ripped out the sleeve and I picked up stitches. There is still a difference. I went through my collection of yarn, uh, of skeins that I had for this sweater. Um, I haven't even mentioned, if, you, if this is your first video, you have no idea what this is. <laughs> this is my single malt sweater. It's a pattern by Maxim Sear, AKA Max the Knitter, and I am knitting it out of my Merino Aran, Stranded Dye Works Merino Aran in the coffee bean colorway which is a colorway I absolutely love. And I've had so many messages about how nice this colorway is since I shared this again on the video. Um, I will be having some in the shop. I'm dyeing it today. Um, it will probably just be on Aaron this week because I don't know, I've been dyeing it for a wholesale order, so I don't know how much more I'll get done. Um, but there will be some going into the shop, I promise. <laughs> so I picked up the sleeve with the darkest skein I could find. I don't think it's as bad as it was. There's still a bit of a difference, but you can see it is getting darker again here. So I think I might be able to make it work. And I'm also eliminating the sleeve decreases. I'm just gonna keep trying on the sleeve and then I'll start doing the decreases um, when it kind of gets to that point on my arm where it's getting a bit too loose. So hopefully it will fit. So I tried it on yesterday um, to have a look at how the, decre the decreaseless sleeve was going. It's fine. Um, and the body does fit. It is gonna need a good block. Um, and it might fit better after top surgery. But we shall see. We shall see. I mean, it's getting cold. Well, it will be getting cold. And I'm gonna need some sweaters, so. I think I might just have to suck it up. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, I need to tack down the neck of this. I keep meaning to do it because it really, it's really annoying me. Uh, this is, it's not like a random funnel roll neck. It is just a double thick collar, um, which I added because I really like that in a sweater and I think it'll be really nice and cozy. So I need to tack that down. I might do that today. So many people had different opinions on what I should do with this sweater. Uh, so many people were just like, make it into like a vest or a short sleeve, like just, you know, do the ribbing, like rip the sleeve back and do the ribbing. And I might have considered making it into a vest if it wasn't a raglan, because it wouldn't really be a vest, it would be like a really weird sort of Aran weight knitted t-shirt. And I wasn't really on board with that. I mean, it probably would have worked as a shop sample, um, cause it does show off the color, but I also, as well as showing off the color, I want it to be like, oh, I want to make one of those because it is a really nice sweater. Um, and there's something, so if it had been like a set in sleeve, then yeah, it would probably have been quite a good vest. But 
I think it'll be a better jumper. Um, lots of people will like just rip it out. Life's too short, which true it is. <laughs> Life is very short. Um, but I, I hate ripping out and just ripping out the sleeve was really boring. Um, especially when you're alternating skeins because you can't just pull it out. You have to keep untangling the yarn, total pain. Um, which is why I don't normally bother ripping stuff out. And I hate ripping out stuff and re-knitting it. Like if I'm gonna rip it out, I mean, let's be honest, I probably wasn't gonna rip it out. Um, <laughs> I was just gonna leave it abandoned somewhere. I've got a sweater that I said at my, in my um, video that I filmed all of my whips at the beginning of the year that I was gonna rip out. I started ripping it out. It's my orange tabby sweater, which is kicking around at home somewhere. Um, I do still need to rip that out. <laughs> No idea one. Am I going to make a sweater out of the yarn? Probably not, because it's a colourway that I've sort of retired. Um, yeah. So, we shall see. We shall see. So, hopefully, it'll be a sweater that will look nice. <laughs> Fingers crossed it'll look nice on me, but if not, it will look nice in my booth at shows or in some pictures for social media. <laughs> we shall see. So, that is my single malt sweater. I put a little bit of progress. Well, actually, I've gone back epically since I last shared it with you. I ripped out like half a sleeve. Um, but, you know, I have near a couple of inches on the sleeve since I picked it up again and worked on it yesterday. So that's that. <laughs> that is everything I've been working on this week um, because I've mainly been at work just working on work stuff, which isn't quite as fun. I did. <laughs> I finally assembled my desk. Um that I bought and was delivered. I think when I recorded a video last week, I was talking about how my IKEA delivery was coming or had arrived. Um, I decided I wanted to paint bits of it before I assembled it. So it only like finished drying and stuff yesterday. So um, I would put a picture in here, but there's already loads of stuff. I'm looking at it in the corner. It's already piled with stuff and there's junk everywhere. So uh, <laughs> it'll wait, it'll wait for my studio tour. I'm current, I've got a huge box of yarn, of wholesale yarn that I want to get out. Um, hopefully tomorrow, oh my goodness, it's, it's basically the end of the week already. I don't know where time is going anymore. <laughs> so uh, I want to get that out of the studio tomorrow or maybe early next week just to get it out. And then I can tidy up a little bit. That's the plan. I've also got a really exciting uh, delivery coming today. I've ordered, I bought a bit of uh, secondhand equipment that I'm excited about. I bought an electric skein winder. Um, from Adaya, who was getting rid of theirs. So uh, that's coming today. I'm excited about it. No idea where it's going to go. Ideally, it will go on a table at some point um, so that I can just mind it as it winds from one skein to another. Um, but I'm not quite sure where. My desk isn't quite big enough. I do need to... I'm eventually going to make these big tables that are going to go in the middle of the room. Uh, but, yeah. I'm, there are so many things I want to do, uh, so I'm stuck between doing the things I have to do, which obviously is dye yarn for the shop. You can see some of it on the shelves behind me. Not all of it is shop stock. This stuff here is shop stock, and that stuff up there is in the shop at the moment, and this stuff back here is for a wholesale order. So uh, I'm working on stocking the shop and keeping the shop stocked, and also working on the projects for the studio, but you know they take away time from working on actual dyeing, so... Hooray! <laughs> That's what's happening here. In other news, I don't think I have anything super exciting to share. I went to Fife Pride last weekend and I walked in the March, which was really fun. Um, really enjoyed that. And I'm looking forward to hopefully going to more Pride things next summer. Uh, what else have I been doing? I took a day off on Sunday and I was like, right, I'm going to organise my house. I'm going to tidy up some things. And I ended up... <laughs> I ended up going out and buying some fence posts because, you know, uh, <laughs> I decided that I need, I need, I've got a giant shed in my back garden, but it's, you know, it's full of all sorts of stuff. I'm used, I use it sort of as a little workshop. It's got my like, mitre saw and some other stuff set up and it's got like a workbench in there. Super useful, but it's also uh, full of like about eight crates of kindling to uh, start my fire with in the winters and loads of other bits of wood that I've reclaimed from the church renovations. So I need an auxiliary shed and I've got somewhere I'm going to put one, uh, but I need like a little base for it. So uh, my dad suggested use fence posts for a base. So I was in B&M, which is not to be confused with B&Q. B&Q is a DIY shop that I spend a lot of time and a lot of money in. B&M is like a 
don't know if they exist outside the UK or even in the whole of the UK. Um, it's like a kind of like a bargain sort of shop, really, like a pound stretches or um, a home bargains type shop. Again, they don't have those outside the UK, which I imagine you wouldn't have a shop called pound stretches outside the UK. Uh, Euro stretches, maybe? Dollar? Ah, it's a bit like... It's not like the dollar store, because everything's a dollar there. Like, um, maybe Dollar Tree? Is everything a dollar at Dollar Tree? I don't know, it all blends into one. Uh, but it's the sort of shop where they sell like random bits. They get, sell different things all the time and it's fairly cheap. And they have like food bits, like um, like pantry, like staples and things and dry goods and uh, what else? Um, like bits for your house, like random cushions and other bit, and random bits of DIY stuff and kids toys and things. I was in there the other day looking for white vinegar. Um, not that that's relevant here, although that was it was for dyeing something. So, you know, bringing it back. <laughs> white vinegar is amazing. You can use it for all sorts of stuff. Um, I wouldn't recommend using it for dyeing because it does make everything smell like a chip shop. Um, <laughs> but I, I use it a lot for cleaning. Anyway, um, I was in B&M and I've been to this shop on and off for, for like the three years I've lived here. It, nothing has ever changed. It's the same shop. Um, and I discovered for the first time that it has like a whole, it's got like, um, doors at the back and there's a whole outside section of gardening stuff like they've got fence posts and like great big panels of trellis and like it's it's like the garden section at B&Q or your other like you know DIY store garden section um that they have loads of bread it's all like branded soil and they have some plants and they have great big pots um and like like flat pack sheds and stuff and fence posts and like railway sleepers and all of this stuff Oh my goodness, I was in heaven. <laughs> so I, I filled my car up with fence posts and uh, I'm gonna make, gonna make a base for my little shed, which I'm buying online. Uh, I just want something small to put as I'm just gonna store kindling in it. I don't have a ton of space. Um, but all of the, I've seen, I've seen the shed that I want on across multiple websites. None of them will deliver to my postcode. They all say, you know, deliver to mainland UK and often um, places that say that, will ex they exclude highlands and islands, which, you know, so if you're living on like the Isle of Skye or Shetland or somewhere like that, they're like, oh, you know, we won't deliver to you. If you live in the Highland, like the Scottish Highlands, no, we won't deliver to you. I don't live in the Scottish Highlands. I wish I did live in the Scottish Highlands because they're beautiful. Um, I live about half an hour's drive north of Edinburgh. Like, I'm basically across the river, at, which, you know, if you could drive straight across the river from Edinburgh, you'd get to my house a lot quicker um, than you could if you have to go, you know, over the bridge, which is further inland. Um, but I'm, I'm, not, I'm not in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and they're like, no, no, I won't deliver to your postcode. So I found another shed that will do, and I will get it on order when I'm back from my parents' house because uh, I'm going there next weekend, and it will be sod's law that I order it, and uh, it arrives while I'm away. <laughs> so uh, I'll order it when I get back, and then I will have somewhere to put all of my kindling and maybe some of my paint tins in, so I'll be able to clear some space in my shed, um, and I can work on projects in there during the winter when I can't you know, work on the driveway, which is what I have been doing over the summer when it's dry. So, hooray, all of that. Too. I don't really know why I told you any of that. So, but now you know, now you know. Oh my, um, it's kind of an unfiltered week this week. I'm just, words are falling out of my face and I'm just going with it. This is what happens when I record early in the morning, apparently. Oh my. So, so this all happened on, all to tell you, I just bought some fence posts on Sunday when that whole saga about postcodes, what? <laughs> <laughs> so I did buy some fence posts and I did some gardening and I did some other little bits and pieces and uh, I had a really productive day off which was great and then at about like four o'clock I was kind of like you know what I really need I've got this big cupboard in my house that I used to use to store my undyed yarn in when I was working from home I really need a pantry that cupboard needs to be a pantry <laughs> because it'll be great Just, I'm one person I have a really small kitchen. Well, the kitchen bit of my kitchen is really small. There's not much cupboard space and there's not much work to, like work surface space. So I decided I really need a pantry. And I also, also I do next to no cooking. Um, partly because I don't really enjoy cooking for one person. Partly because I'm, I work quite a lot and then I get home and I'm just like, oh, 
I don't want to cook anything. This sucks. <laughs> But I decided that I needed a pantry to put all this food that I, you know, don't have in. So the first thing I did was go to Lidl, uh, which is like Aldi, which does exist outside the UK. And I know Lidl exists in Europe, but I know Aldi exists in America. Um, I went there, bought loads of food to go in the pantry and came home again. First, first step of making a pantry, go and buy things to put in it. And then, then I was like, right, okay, it had already had these big shelves in, so I was like, um, but it was kind of a little bit rough. So I primed all of the shelves, they were MDF shelves, primed them all. Uh, I've now filled in all of the holes and stuff in there. So the whole cupboard is going to be painted white. Uh, I bought an exciting rack to go on the inside of the door so I can store like sauces and stuff in it. I love organization. Oh my goodness. It's a storage and organization are like, considering I essentially live in a mess <laughs> here in the studio, I love, if there's a place for me to put things, I am happy. Um, I just need to remember to put them in the place and remember where the place is. <laughs> I'm so excited about this pantry. Oh my goodness. Have I finished the window seat? No, no. <laughs> but I have started the pantry. So uh, there'll be pantry updates as, uh, as I work on it. I haven't decided if I want it to be like one of those amazing Pinterest pantries that you see people on Instagram have and they open it and everything's in like glass jars and the, all the glass jars match. There's no sign of like a piece of packaging, um, like branded packaging. Everything is in glass jars, all like labeled with them. Um, either with like one of those Dymo label makers, which I do have, um, or like chalk, chalkboard stickers and written on with like marker pens and stuff, like in calligraphy. Do I want it to be like that? Or do I just want some storage for food? I don't know. It's probably gonna be a bit of a mix between the two, because I'm not gonna go and buy loads and loads of glass jars, uh, because it seems silly, you know, when things come in perfectly serviceable boxes. Um, but I do want, the shelves are quite deep uh, and I do want to be able to kind of like get right to the back. So I might put some crates in there so I can just slide them out. Um, we shall see. We shall see. I haven't decided yet. So I don't know, but I'm quite excited. I feel like this is a very middle-aged thing to be excited about, but I'm kind of obsessed with the idea. <laughs> And I also cleaned out my old dye room over the weekend. Still haven't decided what I'm going to do with it. At the moment, I'm just standing my laundry in there to dry because I've decided that, you know, um, I can't afford to keep putting all of my clothes in the tumble dryer because tumble dryers use a lot of energy. And also, my tumble dryer isn't very good. I don't know much about dryers. Never had one until I moved here. Like, my parents don't have one. Um, but I got one when I moved to Scotland because like, it rains a lot. And like, where am I going to get? How am I going to get my clothes dry? But... It takes like three cycles to get it dry. And I read somewhere that it takes, it, it costs like three pounds or something to run your tumble dryer. So I'm paying nine pounds to get one load of clothes dry. That seems weird. I feel like you should put things in the, and I'm sure when I first got the dryer, I put things in it and it would be dry like within one cycle. So I don't know why now it's taking three cycles. So uh, I've decided that the tumble dryer is now just for drying towels so that I can get them all nice and soft and fluffy and everything else is just going on <laughs> drying racks and errors in my old, uh, in my old dye room. <laughs> this will change when it hits the middle of winter uh, and nothing gets dry, but you know, for now, that's what's happening. Anyway, so things we've talked about on this week's video, uh, fence posts, postcodes, uh, drying clothes, um, <laughs> how I style my hair, Oh my goodness, I'm sorry. <laughs> right, on to some shop news. There is going to be, I'm trying to have weekly shop updates at the moment. So every Friday I'm trying to put something in the shop. So I will be having a shop update this week. Uh, I've got an assortment of yarn going into the shop. It's all back here. Let's, let's start with some sock sets. And I have some more feathered and limoncello sock sets going into the shop. My sock sets consist of a 100 gram skein of sock yarn, in this case, merino nylon, and a coordinating or contrasting uh, 20 gram skein, uh, in this case, limoncello. So we have feathered sock sets. Hang on a second. I was organized. Where, where did I put my organization? Oh, it's right here. I pulled some of my swatches from my swatch library so I could share the colors. 
So this is feathered. So this is feathered. I'm working on limoncello at the moment, but you know, it's, it's bright yellow. You kind of get the idea. It's not variegated or anything. So that's feathered. I will have some feathered sock sets going into the shop. And I will also have some feathered on BFL nylon, not sock sets, just single skeins. The other sock sets I've got going into the shop are these industrial kingfisher ones. So we have industrial kingfisher on BFL nylon. These ones are BFL. Uh, with a little mini skein of Kingfisher Blue. And I have a swatch of Industrial Kingfisher here. I love this colorway. I love this colorway. I do say that about quite a lot of my colorways, but whatever. <laughs> Industrial Kingfisher sock sets. And then, what else? I have some blue rinse going into the shop on Merino Aran. Yes, I have a swatch for blue rinse. So this is blue rinse. The swatches, obviously they're not identical. Um, this is knit on DK weight and this is Aran weight and it's hand dyed yarn. So they each skein will vary, but it gives you an idea of what that color looks like knit up. So Merino Aran, blue rinse. I have some shiner on Merino DK. I don't have swatches for all of the colorways going into the shop. I just happen to have them for these. I have Flower Crown, Flower Crown on BFL Nylon and on Merino Cotton. This is the last swatch I have to share with you. <laughs> and this is Flower Crown. It is a lovely pale gray that has been liberally speckled with greens and mauves and there's some lilac and some orange in there as well. There's a few skeins of my red velvet colorway going into the shop on Merino Sport Weight. Uh, I do actually have a swatch out of this, but it is on the other side of the studio. And again, it's a semi-solid colorway, so you can kind of get an idea of what that's gonna look like. So red velvet on Merino Sport Weight. I will have red velvet going into the shop on other bases soon. I'm just working on a wholesale order. And when I finish that up, I'm gonna spend some time dyeing some of the semi-solid colors that don't make it into the shop as often as I would like to. Next year, I'm hoping to be able to offer some of my colorways on like a rolling pre-order. Uh, so they're always on the website and you can just buy like sweater quantities and stuff as you need them. Uh, and I'll just dye them up as they come in on like a month to month basis. But at the moment, um, I'm hesitant to offer pre-orders because though I do have a pre-order thing coming up um, in the next couple of weeks or so, but in a general, as a general rule, I'm hesitant to offer pre-orders because both of my parents are sick. Uh, they're 500 miles away if you're a new viewer uh, and I'm an only child. So I, it's like, there have been occasions where I've you know dropped everything as quickly as I could to go down there, which is fine. If it means I have to pull like a ready to ship update, that's fine. Um, but if I've got like 200 skeins of you know red velvet to dye up that people have paid for for pre-orders uh, and I have to spend three weeks at my parents' house, even though I give my pre-orders like a, a, a four week turnaround usually, um, that's really pushing it to get those colors done. And you know, I don't want people to be waiting for things that they've paid for. So pre-orders are coming, but probably not until next year. I'm sorry about that, but you know, it's been a, it's been a long year. Oh my goodness, and we're only in September. <laughs> So, back onto what's going into this week's update, which is a ready to ship update. I've got some of my Poison Dart colorway, which is a bright orange. Just really, really fun. Poison Dart on Merino Nylon. I've got some glass slipper going into the shop. I've got a glass slipper on Merino Nylon and on Merino Cotton. I'm thinking about stealing a skein of this. Uh, is it stealing when it's technically your own stuff? Uh, probably not, <laughs> to make a sweater for my niece out of because it's really squishy and lovely. And uh, that reminds me, I had so many people <laughs> be like, you're an only child, but you've got a niece. How does that work? So uh, Robin is technically my honorary niece. Um, she is the daughter of my best friends and I absolutely love her to pieces. So I'm all about like chosen family and found family. When you only have like two family members um, and they're both sick, you need to kind of pull in your resources from other people. So uh, yeah. Robin is my Robin is my honorary niece, but uh, I'm her uncle Jude, and uh, she's my niece. So 
very exciting. <laughs> so glass slipper on merino cotton. I've also got some maritime on merino cotton. And I have some nest on merino nylon. There will be some other things going into the shop too. Um, like I said, I will have some coffee bean on my merino Aran base. So all of that and more will be going into the shop on Friday, which if you're watching this on the day this video comes out is today. <laughs> the 23rd of September at 7pm British summertime. Like I said, I am doing weekly shop updates at the moment and I'm trying to keep more yarn in the shop um, like all week long so that you don't just have to head over there on Fridays for shop updates. Uh, but you can like stop in on a Wednesday and there'll still be things for you to choose from. So that's the plan anyway. I have big plans. Just need to put them into action. Right, I have a lot of things to do today. I need to get cracking with those. Thank you very much for watching what turned into a quite a long and rambling video. I will see you next week, maybe. We shall see. I am going to my parents next weekend, so uh, I think I should be able to squeeze in a video before I go. Fingers crossed. Have a lovely day, everybody. Bye.